guys, it's Jason. <clears throat> Thanks for joining in. So this is a piece that I started working on digitally, uh, as promised for <clears throat> a video for you guys. <clears throat> and I just wasn't coming up with lines that I liked. It, it found, I found it so hard to kind of really commit to things that really just didn't feel like they didn't have the appropriate line weight. I was really struggling to kind of get into those little details. Um, <clears throat> there is very little parallax on the screen that I have, but it still just didn't feel like I could lay my lines down where I wanted them to be, and I was getting frustrated with it. So um, I printed this guy out and I started. Um, as you can see, I've gotten pretty far here. That's been a couple of days worth of work on this one. Uh, big spreads, lots and lots going on, and it, it took some real time. Um, Kind of go over what I did here. I'm currently using with this, this is a, a 108 nib, if I'm cr remembering correctly. Yeah, this is a 108. Um, <clears throat> typically, I just use the 102, but I went into this piece with the idea that I wanted to be able to uh, use a few different tools in different areas to see really kind of what lines I could get with them, um, test them out. Um, recently I kind of came across a, a uh, tweet by Klaus Janssen. Johnson, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's one of those names I've, I've pretty much only ever read. Uh, <clears throat> but he had mentioned that he used a couple of different tools there that I had not really heard of other inkers using much, one of which was a 103 nib. Uh, and then I ran across a video of uh, Jimmy Reyes using a 108. And I had actually, from a kit that I had bought years ago, had them both laying around. So I thought I would try them out. Um, <clears throat> so parts of this are done with a 108. Parts of it are done with a 107 uh, parts are done with a 103, and parts are done with a 102. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the line I got on all of them, really. But um, they feel different. They have different ways of getting different weights. Um, honestly, I think if I was really going to pick what I felt most comfortable with in the long run, it would be the 103 um, or the 108. Um, but neither here nor there. The 108 gets a wider line. All of them are really great for these textures, though, and these little, like, rock textures and different lines that I, I can give there. Even the, the line weight on this little dinosaur here. like a rainstorm is blowing in here and I uh, my allergies are blowing up with it a little bit uh, you'll notice that the end of my uh, nib holder there is pink I, I needed some way of telling my my different nibs apart at a glance and uh, I had these like weird little glitter paint markers around from some kind of art thing that, that uh, my partner bought a while back make do with what you have around the house right You know, I probably should be using um, French curves and templates a little bit more, but I really like hand drawing things, and I've got a pretty steady hand for most lines and curves. Um, <clears throat> I do occasionally make a mistake, but don't we all, right? Um, I loved all the different things in this page too. We have you know, rocks, and then there's all the Batmobile tech stuff up front, and then there is uh, the dinosaur and the bats with the fur, and then you've got you know Bruce himself, and just lots of stuff going on here. Really love this page. I've always been a big admirer of it, and I thought it would, I would learn a lot from it, and I did. I was very correct in that. <clears throat> Aside from just learning my tools, I kind of learned uh, a little bit about line weight and kind of how to adjust some things, different textures. 
throwing lines for fur. Um, I also learned a very difficult uh, lesson in this in that I had to patch something. Um, it's a little hard to see from here, but there is a spot just below where my hand is right now where uh, I had spilled some ink and then tried to clean it up and it was not as dry as I wanted it to be, so it ended up making a bit of a gray smear. And it's it was really just hard to kind of get cleaned up. So I did just a little bit of vellum and uh, a glue stick and basically cut out a little stencil about the size of the spot that I needed to patch, patch that, and then just inked over the top of it. Um, it's something that if I scan, I'll have to clean up just a little bit, I think, but it is total, totally fixable. Um, and it happens. I mean, I hate doing it. It's not my, my best or my, my greatest work by any means, but it happens. And I this is a big piece that took me a long time. I wasn't gonna throw the whole thing out because I messed up in a spot the size of a quarter. And luckily it wasn't a uh, super up front pot, a spot. It was a, a small place with a little feathering. And Capullo is so good at just building the scene and all the little details in it. There is so much in this. As you do the background, there's the tumbler from the Dark Knight series is back there. And then there's the, you know, the bat wing and the, the bat copter and the bat glider and the bat floaty. I don't know. There's just, there's a, the bat everything and it's all in there and it's all detailed and Capullo is so good at just giving it all to you. <clears throat> Absolutely love it. I've never really done a double page spread like this. Um, one of the things I found was a bit cumbersome was just trying to spin a page this big on my drafting table, which is a pretty large drafting table still, but it was, it was not easy. I had to pay a lot of attention to it. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of ink smears on the back. The tape didn't want to hold in one spot, so it kept kind of boxing the edges at that spot. And it, uh, can't give me a ridge that was a little hard to deal with a couple of times there towards the bottom where the that bottom Batmobile is up on the the rack looks like I'm scratching at the board, but I'm really not. I've, I've got a, it's a slight bit of, oh yeah, this I've moved over here to the, the 102 nib. I can tell because the handle I am using is broken at the end and is worn out and it needs tape to hold onto a nib. Uh, I actually have gotten a new replacement handle since then, um, but this was just yesterday actually. Um, but, you know, you know, I had to make it work. I enjoyed this panel. It was a lot of fun, uh, this little inset panel of all the costumes. You'll notice that that glove I am wearing is a... Uh, digital inking glove and uh, I honestly won't ink without it anymore um, it just keeps my hands cleaner for one and for two it it's, helps keep smears from happening I saw an inker the other day who was uh, making a video online and they had just taken an old um, winter glove and cut 
couple of fingers out of it so that they could hold their brush well and use that. And I guess that was sort of the old school way of doing it. It seems like my hand would get hot, but you know, you gotta make what work what you gotta make work, right? So I think I, one of the reasons I don't use templates as much is I, I actually do have a pretty steady hand. Um, this comes from watercoloring a lot. Um, I, I used to really kind of do a lot of portraiture work with watercolors, so I would have to do a lot of like individual little tiny lines and, and curves and hair and yeah, it was it was a lot. So I, I kind of developed a bit of a steadier hand trying to do a lot of that. Um, and I feel like a hand-drawn line that is steady has more texture and um, or it feels more organic, I guess, than a st perfectly straight line that you get digitally. Um, not that those aren't useful, but I find, like, especially when I'm doing cityscapes, I really like them. Um, but then what I'll do is go in after the fact and, and kind of give it a little bit of variety so it doesn't feel just perfectly straight every time. Um, or um, you can use rulers in Clip Studio and then use whatever brush you want over the top of it. And I'll use some uh, textured brushes that kind of have a little bit of grit to them <clears throat> for that kind of thing. screen here a little bit I apologize there we go I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell when I lift my paper up there is a square or kind of just a few corners taped off with a uh, blue painters tape so I, I can mark my cue of where I'm supposed to be to stay in screen <laughs> while I am shooting uh, I shot a couple of videos of, as I was going for, for with this where I just kept ending up where half of it was I like, just me off in one corner where you couldn't see anything so I fixed that. <laughs> hey, I'm learning. I, I've never really shot a lot of video. This is all kind of new to me, which is why it's going a little slow. Um, but I'm learning, and I, you know, I'm trying to experiment with other types of videos. I've been doing my my little two minute book reviews. I'm hoping to give you guys some more ideas of uh, art books that have helped me, art books specific to comics that have helped me, uh, comic artists that have studying their work has helped me um you know just there's really so much uh that i want to share and I, I i don't want to do a giant here's 15 books that you need to go buy so i thought maybe some uh little quick two minute reviews would help you guys and you know you can find some specific things i just put two up this last couple of weeks Uh, also, if you're curious about my workspace or my tools, I've got a new video that I just put up earlier today uh, that kind of shows my workspace and what I'm using. Um, there's a, a lot of different tools, a lot of things I've collected from when I was doing watercolor, a lot of things that I've collected over the years of just doing random things. Um, you know, back to the repeatographs. I, I like these really tiny repeatograph lines for a lot of my small background stuff, especially if it is like tech detail. Um, I don't know why that Robin costume was kind of fun. I think I just enjoyed the lines that I got on the cape. <clears throat> Sorry, off screen again there a little bit. Um, one of the things I'll talk about while I'm there is I think I'm filling in some of the details off to the side, but. Um, You'll notice that there is this like ridge or shelf that, that you're looking up at the bottom of on that panel. And I found the lines in that kind of hard to do. Um, maybe we'll, we'll get back to me showing you there in a second while I'm paying, when I'm paying attention again to where I'm supposed to have my piece of paper. <laughs> I'm 
Another thing I want to try and do is I think I want to try and do at least part of this page again digitally and show you where, where I was struggling, why I was struggling with what I was struggling with. Um, but that, that might have to come a little bit later. I, I am screen capturing that. My computer is awfully slow, so it does kind of slow down my, my ability to work on that. Um, I might even do some of it on Procreate on my tablet. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done anything like that. Uh, this is sped up a bit, so I, I, I do apologize. It looks like I'm pulling lines like super fast really well, but really I'm, I'm going at like double time here. I'm, I'm moving much slower, I promise. <laughs> So many little textures. All right. I don't know how long I can stay off screen like that. That's just really ridiculous. I apologize, guys. I gotta get better at this. Oh, there I go. I'm a little back on screen. If you wanna watch the corner. Yeah, doing a lot of these rocks up here. There's so many rock textures, so many. And I did use a lot of different tools to kind of accomplish that, and I, I really feel like each shot kind of has a little bit of a different look because you're looking at it from different angles and different lighting. So I wanted it to feel a little different while feeling consistent. I kept having to hold the edges of the paper up too. We just. I think after being moved around too much, it started just curling at the edges and wanting to lift up a little bit. And I kept wanting to kind of bounce the edge of my pen and I was getting frustrated with that. But I don't want to type it, tape it down because I will uh, need to spin the paper around to move things. And I just, that was going to be frustrating to me. lightning going on outside. Eventually, I'm going to get to the lines underneath that shelf. I, I can tell I stopped there because I wasn't really thrilled with it. And I went back and did a little correction when I got to, to the end of this. Maybe not to the end of this video, but before I got to the end of finishing this page. I don't have the whole thing up here. This was several days. Uh, I'm usually pretty good about completing a page in a, in a day, day and a half at most. Uh, but this one was, I mean, this was a long page with a lot on it. And it, I didn't want to make myself move faster than I would do with quality. Uh, or I could do with quality. So I, I, when I started getting tired, when I started getting frustrated or anything, um, I, I'd kind of walk away for a little while. Um, I didn't want anything to feel like I had gotten lazy in the end. That's not to say that I don't see mistakes in it uh, or lines that I don't like, um, but... I, I got a lot accomplished and I learned a lot here, so I'm, I'm still proud of it. I am real happy with this piece, even if I am real unhappy with small pieces of this piece, if that makes sense. Sure you guys wanted a video of looking at the back of my ear. There you go. 
tend to lean in just right on top of things, so I apologize. I am in the way a bit, I see. I started getting frustrated with that pen. I had to move to something else. It was not quite getting where I wanted it to go. So I slowed myself down quite a bit here and just. Happier with that. <laughs> Took my time. Sometimes you just have to slow down, use the tool you're most comfortable with for the thing that's the hardest to do. while I'm learning. I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder overhead. It's, it's pretty ro ro like rolling kind of low thunder, but it is uh, definitely coming down hard out there. Makes me wish I had mowed the yard earlier, but oh well. A little dino tail for you. I always wondered how they got that in there, right? Like, how do you get a dinosaur delivered to your house and then into a cave like that without a team of construction workers who are gonna end up knowing that you're Batman? Like, I, I don't know. I got, I've always had questions about how some of this stuff got built. You'll notice I skip around quite a bit. I'll kind of stick to one area and then I'll go, ooh, I see that thing. Ooh, I see that thing. Ooh, a piece of candy. It's just the way it is. It's weirdly ADHD and OCD all at once. It's funny to, see to pick art forms that are uh, very OCD driven. <laughs> For a long time, I was a, uh, a photographer, and I did a lot of darkroom work uh, back when film was still king. And you would, uh, man, I'd go into a dark room and I'd spend just hours at a time in there trying to get the perfect print, um, which was, you know, a next to impossible thing. But uh, it actually taught me a lot about how to use blacks and uh, tonal variation, which I think is something that's kind of helped me in my pursuit of this this art form. Um, and then, uh, you know, in photography in and of itself is like both using composition and eye, but also using technical skill. And, and I, you know, that seems to fit me here as well. And then I went on to be a professional chef for several years. Lots of skill level there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am a I'm pretty proud of it in the long run. I did a lot of work here and it took me a long time, but uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I hope to have more up for you soon. Thanks.